The Fred Allen Show. Scheduled especially at this time and rebroadcast exclusively for you men in the armed forces of the United States and your brothers in arms by the Special Service Division of the War Department. Starring Fred Allen with Portland Hoffa and Al Goodman's Orchestra. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And, Jimmy, tonight we have got to make good. That's all there is. We have got to uh, excel tonight. This is a gala occasion. Yes, Fred. Tonight is your 100th Texaco Star Theater oh, broadcast. Oh, boy. It? Just think, Jimmy, my 100th broadcast. If I was a century plant and this was my 100th anniversary, I would open my petals and give off a rare aroma. <laughs> you don't need petals, brother. <laughs> And I, it's been a lot. You, call, you called in your own writer for that line. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long time, Jimmy. You know, when we started this program, John's other wife hadn't even met John. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney was just another lawyer in the Goodwill Court in those days. And the best tunes of all came from Singing Sam. <laughs> Fred, 100 programs. Yeah. I wonder how many times I've said, stop in at your Texaco dealers at any time. Oh, I wouldn't even know. I wouldn't dare to compute a, a thing like that, Jimmy. I wonder how many times I've heard that Mr. voice. Mr. Allen! Well, you're just in time, Portland. Jimmy and I were reminiscing. Is this your 100th broadcast tonight? Yeah. Gosh, when you started in radio, Superman was just a Boy Scout, wasn't he? We used to chase the little punk out of the studio. Get away, you. you know, back in those days, a man named Benny was the biggest thing on the air. Jack is still a big man on the air. Not tonight, he wasn't. Is Jack sick? Oh, yes, but it's nothing serious. He was on the Quiz Kids show a couple of weeks ago. He caught the whooping cough from one of the Quiz Kids. <laughs> Oh, well, he's not that sick. Then why didn't he come out? Well, the real reason Benny stayed in bed tonight is because the hotel is charging him $18 a day, you see. Now, Benny won't come out of the room. He's in there trying to get his money's worth. <laughs> it's awful. He keeps his lights on all day, the water running in there. If you're going to get mad, we'd better go down to Allen's Alley. No, no, the alley is closed up. They're putting in a new manhole. <laughs> So tonight we're showing a special newsreel. The March of Trivia presents its weekly lowlight from the world of news. Hollywood, California, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, makes its annual awards for outstanding achievements in the cinema industry during the past year. 
March of Trivia Ignoring Academy makes its own awards to little-known Hollywood folks who contributed nothing to the advancement of motion pictures during 1942. And now an award to two songwriters, Hogan and Dugan. Hello, hello, we're here to say hello. Now how do we do, now Polly, but we're just hello. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> now look, just, uh, just a minute, boys. Okay, pal. You are the only two songwriters in Hollywood not to get a song in a picture during 1942. Crosby don't even know us by sight. He doesn't? Well, how many songs did you write? Two hundred. Not counting the Rinso jingles. Not counting the jingles. <laughs> well, <laughs> how come you've had such a bad year, boys? It's the breaks. Well, how do you mean? Back in January, we wrote, I'm dreaming of a white New Year's. And New Year's like the years I used to know. <laughs> and, uh, what happened? Nothing. Then we wrote, I'm dreaming of a white Lincoln's birthday. Hey, was a man I'd like to know. And still no break? Not a nibble. Not a nibble. Then we wrote, I'm dreaming of a white April Fool's Day. And uh, this went on all year? We wrote, I'm dreaming of a white decoration day. Yeah? I'm dreaming of a white Fourth of July. Uh-huh. I'm dreaming of a white Labor Day. Well, when, when did you stop writing? In December. We took two weeks off, so what happened? What? what? Some guy, Marvin Moylin, writes, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> And the song is a hit. Now he tells us. <laughs> Hogan and Dugan. Well, I guess that hey, sort of... Hey, old friend, this joyous night, Falstaff's here to give the pipe. Falstaff, we have no time for poems tonight. We'll make time. Really? Have you heard she winked and said, I'll see you later, when I jiggled the end of her fascinator? <laughs> Or perhaps, sir, uh, when Mother turned on the sun lamp, I knew she was going to tan my hide. Now we... <laughs> That's the last straw. You have finally sabotaged a pleasant evening. Tonight we are discussing the Motion Picture Academy Awards. Precisely why I confront you. I have written a poem. What is your poem called? How about an Oscar? How about an Oscar yes. uh, by Mrs. Levant, or is this one of your own? <laughs> this is an open show. Oh, an open show exclusive. Well, how does it go? Each year, they give out Oscars to folks in Hollywood. Actors all get Oscars when their work's been super good. Producers and directors, songwriters get them too. But the people who deserve the Oscars are folks like me and you. We ain't Taylors, Hopes, or Colemans. We ain't even Donna Meachers. We're just the jerks and movie joints who sit through double features. Thank you, Falstaff. And now, from Falstaff's timely ode, we seek solace in song. Aided and abetted by Al Goodman, Hilo, Jack, and the Dame sing for us, taking a chance on love. <laughs> Now, I see a rainbow blending now. We'll have a happy ending. 
standing now, that's what I'm dreaming of. Walking across the park, taking a chance on love and you. Ladies and Mr. Allen. Yes, Portia. Have you a piece of string? String for what? Well, I've got to tie up this gift box for Uncle Phil. Oh, is Uncle Phil in the army? No, he's in jail. Oh, back home again, really? <laughs> for, uh, for what? Well, there was a mistake in Uncle Phil's income tax, and he wouldn't erase it. Why not? He said it was unpatriotic to waste the rubber. <laughs> well, there's a thought there. And they put Uncle Phil in the clink? Yes. Well, that's you know, the, the, that's the new income tax plan. Pay or you go. You fast. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, what does your uncle do all day in the hooskow? Well, today when I went down, he was reading time. Reading it and doing it, huh? <laughs> He's a double threat man. Uncle Phil also writes slogans. Slogans? What uh, what sort of slogans? His latest slogan is: "Girls with fat backs." Shouldn't wear slack. Uh. <laughs> Say, you said a sarong, full Portland, and sarong reminds me our guest tonight is a famous Hollywood star. Ooh, is she a glamour girl? Well, we tried to get a glamour girl, but you know how things are today. If you can't get glamour, you take what you can get. And what did you get? A young lady who, when she was born, set the stalk back 200 years. And here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Meet Miss Ozark for 1943, the Republic Picture star, Miss Judy Canova. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Welcome back to our little Moffat Lubrication Playhouse, Judy. I'm glad to be back, Fred. It says here. Uh. <laughs> yes, um... According to our writers, everyone is always glad to be here, Judy. I'm sorry I didn't get to meet you down at the train, Judy. I tried to get through that mob, but there must have been 5,000 people there. Oh, that crowd wasn't there to meet me, Fred. No? No, they was all butchers. Elsie the cow was in the next car. <laughs> Say, I saw the pictures they took of you down at the Grand Central. You were bending down. Were you tying your shoe? No, I was shaking hands with the mayor. <laughs> you shouldn't overdo it. Some people bump their heads doing that. You have to watch out. I did. Well, this is quite an event, Judy. You know, you were the first Hollywood glamour girl we've had on our program this year. Oh, shucks, Fred. I ain't no glamour girl. <laughs> oh, why, Judy, you have charm, grace, a lovely figure. A dynamic personality. If my draft board is listening, boys, this proves how bad my eyes are. <laughs> Fred, do you mean to stand there and tell me that you tried to get into the Army? Yes, Judy. I went over to my draft board last week. Well, what happened? Well, I crawled into the room. The head of the draft board, an old gentleman... <laughs> I did. I crept into the place. Someone, someone said the ivy's coming in through the door, but it was I. And I crept into the room. The head of the draft board, an old gentleman, took one look at me and said, You take my chair, brother. I'll go. Why, Fred, why, I think you'd make a great soldier. You've got that there military look. The uh, military look? Yeah, with those bags, your eyes look like they're hiding in two foxholes. <laughs> well, these, these aren't bags under my eyes, Judy. They're just little desks for the pupils there. <laughs> Well, please, Judy, as the lesser of two evils, let's talk about you. Tell me, what are you doing? <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing here in New York? Looking for nylons? <laughs> well, no, Fred. You see, uh, I I've been playing the Army camp. Uh-huh. Yeah, I just came up from Camp Shelby in Mississippi. Camp Shelby. The boys at Camp Shelby. <laughs> boys followed you up, I see. <laughs> 
I guess the boys at Camp Shelby must have liked you, Judy. Oh, I ain't so sure, Fred. When Henny Lamar or Betty Grable gave a show at the camp... Yes? The bugler called them in by blowing assembly. Well, what did the bugler blow for you? Mass call. <laughs> Don't let it get you down, Judy. You play those love scenes in your pictures with handsome young leading men. Why, the fellas I get ain't handsome. They ain't young, and I gotta do all the leading. Yeah. <laughs> well, young leading men must be scarce in Hollywood these days. No, they tell me when a director yells, on the set out there, it looks like payday at the Social Security office. <laughs> Well, uh, leading men ain't the only problem in Hollywood, Fred. No? No, the food shortage is changing things, too. Well, I know there's a big change in the Western pictures. Cowboys used to chase cattle, whooping and hollering, yippee! Now they just chase cows and drool. I know. <laughs> they have saddles with built-in cuspidors. But you're certainly lucky, Judy. You know these shortages are going to make you the biggest star in Hollywood? Me? The biggest star? Well, why not? Studios can't get lumber for sets. The stars can't get dress suits and evening gowns. All Hollywood can make from now on uh, will be hillbilly pictures. And that's your racket. You mean the picture companies won't make nothing but hillbilly operas? Why, from now on, all pictures will observe the ration laws, Judy. And I have written a duration scenario. Now, let's you and I try it out and see what it's like. All right? Music, maestro. <laughs> This is a tale of Ozark love. A simple story about simple people told in a trite and hackneyed way. The time spring. The place the palatial Canova FHA lean to. As our story opens, Pa Canova is asleep. Ma Canova is trying to wake him up. Wake up, Pa! Wake up! Yes, yes. What time is it, Ma? It's March! <laughs> Come on, get up now. Here's the rake. Run it for your beard. I ain't touching my beard. There's a field mouse in there folding. <laughs> I'm uh, shaking some flour on your feet. Uh, flour? What for? Companies are coming. Come, come to see who? Come to see Judy May, our daughter. Judy May is aiming to get here. Uh, where is Judy May? She's out riding up and down in the well bucket, rinsing. <laughs> I'll fetch her. Judy May! Judy May! What is it, Ma? Your bowl will be here in a minute, Judy May. That's why I'm rinsing, Ma. Better stand here and drain a mic. Come on, move around. Don't pool up the floor. I won't. I'm aiming to be dry and dainty when Zeke gets here. Here, run some twine through your toes. <laughs> Now, Judy May, stick your hair up with some lard. Say, who is this shop he was a court with Judy May? Why, it's old Josh Allen's bar Z. Him and Judy May has been rubbing muzzles. Eh? <laughs> rubbing muzzles? Yep. I caught Zeke and Judy May in the drugstore the other day. They was alternating. Alternating, you see? Seen him with Mon Eyes. There they was, with a rhubarb phosphate in front of them and only one straw. They was alternating. Uh, I don't care to alternate, man. Where's my gun? Now, hold on, hold on, Paul. Here's Zeke now. Alternate, man. Come in. <laughs> Howdy, sir. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy, Zeke. Hey, what this I hear oh, about you? Oh, my gosh, your boss, Paul. Pull up a crate, Zeke, and set. Hey, uh, what you got in that bag? It's a poke of sweets for Judy May. Before I popped the question, I was aiming to put the peppermint to her. Where is Judy May? She's inside, preening. Judy May! Oh, howdy, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> howdy, Judy May. Gosh, you're as pretty as the tailboard on a circus wagon. Oh, Zeke, you're making me blush clean through my towel. Yes, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Say, you like my new dress, Zeke? Jeepers, I'd like to be a seaman that get up. Them's catalog sacks, ain't they? Uh-huh. Yep. The front's a Pillsbury, and the back lay more chicken mash. Sure is a, <laughs> sure is a stump down good one, Judy. Hip, 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 hip. Hold on with your fancy talk, Z. Kellen. Are you aiming to marry Judy May, or do I see the OPA man about ammunition? <laughs> 
No, I'm, I'm fixing to hitch, Paul. Well, can you support Judy May in the style she's accustomed? Well, I got a plow she can pull. Yeah. I got a cow she can milk. Yeah. I got a set in the eggs she can hatch out. Well, that changed enough. Man that married Judy May has got to have an acre of land. Well, I'll be who danged and double dog dog fanged. I ain't a getting me no acre of land, Paul. Oh, Zeke, don't you love me? Judy May, you're so sweet. You look like a bee just wiped his feet on you. <laughs> oh, pretty talk, me, Z. Yeah. Well, I didn't live till that day you slipped your hand down into my mitten. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you a good wife, Z. I can cook. Cook? How do you fix a weasel? Well, I cook a weasel a rare and back in a pot full of greens. Just the way my ma always cooked it, rare and back. Judy May, you and me has got a hitch. I'll get me an acre of land. Zeke, my man, you got the money? I'll get the money. I'll sell my zither with the picture of Dr. Townsend on it. <laughs> Hold him, Judy May. I'll run for the minister, eh? Judy May make your home a nest, Zeke. She just keeps a singing like a bird all day long. Yeah, she's a singing this critter. Uh, sing something for Ju- uh, Zeke, uh, Judy May. I'll put the record on the phonograph, eh? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Judy May. Sing for Zeke. Okay, baby, donkey, Zeke. Rome wasn't built in a day You have to pay for what you get I will be here when you find me So come and find me, my little pet the man Judy May marries has got to have an acre of land. Why? He needs an acre of land to plant cotton. Yeah, that's right. With Judy May singing like that all day long, her husband's got to have plenty of cotton to keep stuffing in his ears. Thank you, my boy. She's yours. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> the Fred Allen Show, scheduled at this time and rebroadcast exclusively for you men in the armed forces of the United Nations. Now, a special musical afterpiece arranged and prepared expressly for you servicemen. Here's the orchestra with the sort of music your letters express a preference for. Take it away. <laughs>
You have just heard a delayed broadcast scheduled expressly at this time for the Armed Forces of the United Nations by the Special Service Division of the War Department of the United States of America. Ha, <laughs> ha,